Hi everyone, I hope you're doing okay during these really stressful times and you're taking the time out to look after yourselves. I know a number of my friends have had their treatment schedules interrupted and that's just adding stress onto their stress, so take care of yourselves out there. Secondly, you can see I'm back in the kitchen, I've got a different view this time, and I'm going to be cooking you a curry. Now, jelly is not food, has come out. These are just the, some of the pre-order copies hasn't quite arrived yet, been affected by the coronavirus ourselves. So our copies aren't arriving a bit later than planned, not that much later. So we might have the digital version out a bit earlier. So I thought I'd get going and we'll cook some recipes out of it so I can show you. These are really good, particularly at this time because it uses up a few of the pantry ingredients. Plus you can pop them in the freezer and it'll last forever. So, so proud of this book though. I know that you're going to love it. Um, I can't wait to get cooking out of it. Let's go. What I'm cooking for you today is a cauliflower and chickpea curry. There it is there. It's got lots of great protein in it, but if you need to up the protein content, add chicken. It does really well with chicken in this recipe. As you know, you need lots of protein, especially when you're not eating very much. What happens is the muscles start to waste away. And that's exactly what happened to me when I wasn't able to eat very much. I was virtually skin and bone, not much muscle attached at all. So just add in some more if you think you need some more. And it doesn't matter if you only eat a little bit, you're getting more protein that way. Let's see. So I've got all the ingredients laid out here, but I'm going to explain that on an ob another screenshot. It's basically a whole cauliflower. Got some onion, chickpeas. We've got a bit of, um, bit of kale, and that's got spinach in it as well got some tomatoes and an array of spices. See if I can tilt that to show it's very colourful. This one's super easy. It's just in the one pan, cook it up, serve it up or put it in the freezer. Let's do it. Okay, get the heat on. To the pan I'm going to add some olive oil and the onion. I'm using a red onion here, that's all that I had. I'm not going out to the shops very much at the moment, if at all. So I had a red onion, you can use a brown onion or a white onion, it doesn't really matter. An onion's an onion, sometimes. I'm sure I'll get into trouble for saying that by somebody. So I want to just let this fry up a bit for about three minutes. So while that's frying up, just going to show you something really cute. I've come up with these for the book, see those? They're little face icons, I guess you call them. All the little icons correspond to a cancer treatment side effect. So we have six of the most common ones there. And throughout all the recipes, the little faces crop up. So you know that say if you're experiencing difficulty swallowing and the little icon is there, that's a recipe you'll be able to eat. Okay, so the onion has softened a bit. And to that, I'm going to add some ginger. I've got a ginger paste here. Haven't been out to the shops again. Perhaps I mentioned that before. So I just haven't been able to get anything fresh of late. And the same with um, the garlic. I'm using garlic powder because I don't have any fresh. And at this point, I'm also going to put in all of those yummy spices. The reason I'm putting in the spices at this stage is to actually cook them off a bit. So what you need to do with the spices, they need to be brought back to life, if you like, and just have the flavours come out of them. So you do this just gently, very gently, for oh, say just even a minute. You can really start smelling the, the fragrance of the spices. Um, I was brought up in a household where my father and his mother were born and raised in India. So if I don't cook the spices first, I get into a lot of trouble. Right, they've cooked up nicely. And so what you just need to do is add your cauliflower and the chickpeas, add the chickpea juice as well, it's all good. And the tomato. Look, there's probably not going to be enough liquid in this at this stage, so that's why I'm using all the juices from the can as well. If there's still not enough, just add a splash of water just so there's enough to move everything around in. Right, that's everything in there. I did end up adding a bit more water to that because it does need it this time. I think my cauliflower was quite big. So just move that round. 
we're going to cover that and let it simmer, um, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. This is really individual depending on how big you've cut up your cauliflower. So it needs to be quite tender. Um, and also what you can do with this if you do have trouble um, swallowing or a sore dry mouth, you can actually blend this up. So it forms like a bit like a soup, I suppose. Um, still tastes just as good. Just a little word of warning with this, it does have turmeric in it. Be really careful of the turmeric, particularly if you're wearing white. If it gets on you, it's a disaster. Been simmering away for about 20-25 minutes because my cauliflower was quite big. And when I look at that now, oh, I'll just turn that noise off. When I look at that now, that looks just about right. So I don't have asbestos hands like Jamie Oliver. I can't even pick. Oh no, actually it might do. You probably see it a bit there. Really, really colourful. At this stage, I'm going to add in the kale and spinach, like lots of kale and spinach. Look, this only needs about five minutes, if that, to do its thing in here. And the recipe also calls for a coconut yogurt. I don't have any coconut yogurt today, surprise, surprise, because I've not been out. So I'm going to use coconut milk instead. Look, you can use coconut milk, coconut yogurt, coconut cream. It's all good, it tastes the same. So we'll stir that through. Oh, that's looking good, lovely. And just pop the lid back on. I'm probably only going to do this for about another two minutes and, and then I'll stir through the coconut milk. So at this point I'm going to add in the coconut milk. Look, just add as much or as little that you want. I probably won't use the whole tin because that'll be just a bit too much. Could do with a little bit more though. I'm going to go with about half a tin for this one this time. And stir that through and if you need you know like some extra fats in the diet because you've lost a lot of weight I'd be using coconut cream for this one instead and if these pieces of cauliflower see if I can do this without disaster if these pieces of cauliflower are just a bit big for you then crack out your mush crack out your spud masher and just give it a bit of a press, make them into small pieces, much easier to swallow. What to serve this with? You can have it on its own, it's just fine the way that it is. You can put it with rice or you can put it with couscous. Look, I'm a real fan of using the, um, the pre-made packets of couscous and rice. The thing is, when you don't have a lot of energy and you don't feel like eating, you're not going to feel like cooking. And if you can make it as much less effort, that's hideous grammar I know, if you can make it as little effort as possible then you're more likely to eat something. So go with the packet things in, in those cases, they just take too long to cook otherwise. Right, we'll just pop this in a bowl and just remember this is all adaptable and modifiable, I don't know if that's a word, could be, um, depending on the side effects that you're having at the time. Look, I've been indoors too long, <laughs> as you can tell by my hideous jokes like um, beefing up the protein, just pardon that pun. I think we're all going a little bit stir crazy at the moment, so it's okay. There we are. I'll get some photographs of that, but you can probably see that there. It's a really nice meal and just pop the remainder in the freezer if you're not going to have it during the week. Hope you enjoy it. Bye.